routine. I'm si I'm watching it on, on my phone. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Adam Feezy, and I bid you welcome to the Madhouse. It's my co-host, Mr. Mark David Stallard from the Invisible Man Show. How you doing, Mark? I am doing well, buddy. Thank you so much. And I also bid thee welcome to the Madhouse. I have been looking forward to getting these on the show for a little while now, to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Chambers and Julia Calvo from Cyceria. How are we doing, ladies? Hello. Not too bad, not too bad. A bit cold. I, th I think everyone is at the moment, really. It is getting yeah. a bit nippy even here. Um, but, yeah, so it, how are things? It, it's, it's the first time I've ever actually spoken to you uh, guys, like, actually looking at you as well, so... <laughs> you're not you're not frightened you're not run away this is good news oh god <laughs> <laughs> no. go on no. <laughs> no, it, it's all good um yeah and uh thank you to everyone for coming and watching tonight we've got uh probably our highest starting numbers so far which is <laughs> crazy frankly um it Clark Williams says, Jackie and Julia, it must be Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's uh, nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> Clark. Uh, but yeah, so uh, like, uh, how are you guys getting on? Still rehearsing, still plowing away? Well, as much as possible, really. Now you go, Jackie. Last week, we did a rehearsal. Was it last week? Yeah. So we did a rehearsal, but it wasn't what it really, Julie. I think we were just more like exchanging presents and eating mince pies. <laughs> and so yeah, pretty much. We lots of calendars and Christmas cards because we had a, a giveaway, didn't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did. Went through the new songs as well. We have a few new songs um, that we wrote during lockdown. So that's probably going to go on album number three. Yes. Which is uh, exciting. I, I have heard through the grapevine that album number three might be on its way. But first, I want to talk to you about the Re Reflections album that came out this oh, year. Oh, definitely. Um, <laughs> awesome album, by the way. Um, oh, thank you. A, obviously, the touring being cut short due to a certain little microscopic bugger that we won't mention. Mm -hmm. But, uh, um... well, I can, I can, no, if I can just jump in, uh, I was looking, noticed on the Sisteria website on the blog, I it's uh, Sisteria yes. yes. and Girls School. <laughs> Hi, everyone. What a great year 2019 was, and 2020 setting up to be even better, to be an even better one. So, I'm assuming you didn't know this was coming either. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> although we were very, very lucky, we did actually. I mean, I'm now out in on tour with girls' school January and February, and Cyteria started in March. So we uh, officially launched the album February the 21st. Yeah. So we luckily got a little bit in just before lockdown. So I think, what did we do, Julie? About five weeks? We did the, all of the first leg of the tour that it was about, like, I don't know, about 10, yeah. 10 gigs or so. And we had all of the Scottish gigs that we had to uh postpone or well when the lockdown came in we had to just quit all of the well we couldn't do all of the scottish ones but we managed to do the uh, wales and the mainland as well nice so um, so, so the, the second album is always known as the kind of make or break one really uh yeah because uh, your first album rantabot was so well received um how, what what did you feel about the reception this album got? It, well, to be honest, when he did the, we did the first album because we got nominated for an independent music award and we got shortlisted to last five in America and New York. So that we were thinking, oh my god, this is going to be so hard to follow up. We were getting rave reviews, and yeah. it was really like, okay, we just write, we just do what we do, and we just relaxed and just did it <laughs> and luckily this got rare reviews as well unfortunately we didn't get to play it to anybody apart from five kids but we will do we will do well a quick comment to everyone in the chat if you don't know them already go check them out please go and support Citeria. the second album reflections is out now fantastic record um the question i've always <laughs> wanted to that's, uh, i just like to say the web just let them know the website uh that's uh citeria.co.uk and that's s um, yeah, S Y T E R I A dot C O dot UK. Well, we've got you saying the name right now, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you got the name right that time. 
Oh, yeah. yeah sorry about that. I, I've yeah. been saying it the whole time. And then I realized <laughs> I was typing it fine. Was, uh, <laughs> Always apologies. Alike. Competition, not competition. How to say the name? Scienteria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully it's the name everyone watching will be saying by the end of tonight. <laughs> um, Amazing. Uh, the the question I've always kind of wanted to ask you, Jackie, and I I'm not sure why I never have because we've spoken quite regularly since another thing that we'll come on to a bit later in the show. Um, obviously, for quite a few years, you were already playing all over the world with girls' school or just one of the legendary bands, one of my favourite bands of all time, frankly. What made you want to do another band? Well, I've been in girls' school now since 1999, so it'll be 22 years soon, and I've known girls even longer than that. And um, I think it got to the point where we weren't doing enough gigs for me, for my liking. I love playing gigs. And it's like um, Kim and Denise have been in the band for the full 43 years. So they've been playing Emergency and Race with the Devil and Come On, Let's Go and Hit and Run 43 years. So can you imagine the enthusiasm to tour all the time isn't there? Yeah. So whereas I really, really want to play still, I love to get out there and play gigs. That's my favorite thing. So um, I, and Kim Rose saying, you know, because I joined Blitzkrieg, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was. I did a few gigs then and it just kept me happy because it just kept me, you know, a few gigs here, a few gigs there. But then um, I decided to put a band together near a home, you know, in Yorkshire. And uh, Kim says, yeah, go for it. It sounds like a good idea. You won't bother me then with all this. <laughs> so I did put it together and I was very lucky to find Julia and all the rest of them. It, it was brilliant, really. It was just perfect. It just seemed to fall together so nicely. Nice. I think that was the end. It was like October 2015. So five years now. And we just kind of um, recorded Santa's Harley as an introduction to the band, so because it was near Christmas, it was going to be released, and then of course I went on tour with um, Motorhead, so that was end of 2015. So we didn't really do anything until 2016 when we really, really kicked that bit, and we got Pablo to play drums. Um, I believe I actually, <laughs> I, I believe I actually watched you on that tour with Motorhead. Um, yes, you did. You came to Bristol, didn't you? you said. Yes. Um, Julia, how did you how did you get involved in all this craziness then? Well, I just met Jackie through a mutual acquaintance. We we met for a, for a drink in Weatherspoons in the Leeds train station, and we just hit it off from there. It was so like it just was meant to be. I, I felt really immediately connected with Jackie, and we just did a little recording together, some demos, and then we just took it from there, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'm almost ashamed to say I haven't been able to see Citeria live yet, but. Oh, you will. Uh, you quite. will. There's so, there's time. <laughs> not not quite my fault. <laughs> we'll let you off. We'll, we'll give you that one. Yeah, definitely. I just have an excuse being on the other side of the world. <laughs> uh, yeah. You've got <laughs> that's nah, not Mark. an excuse. No, nah, Mark, that's no excuse. Get on a plane, <laughs> man. You must fly to the game. <laughs> uh, just strap like a little dinghy to the back of one of the cruise ships when they start up again you'll be all right mate <laughs> yeah. when, they get, when they leave job we'll just sneak onto one of them vans nobody's gonna check i'm just so glad to go <laughs> but um yeah it, like honestly um i've watched a lot of the Citeria live footage it looks like a cracking live show um i it would be rude of me not to mention that you guys are one of the few bands in the country that have actually been gigging uh, at least a bit, even through uh, COVID-19, particularly a socially distant show at Real Time Live. I kind of want to ask you about that experience because mainly because I'm sure I'm unsure if I want to try doing one. It was great. I mean, we've done a couple. We did one in uh, Cumbria. and But what we did, we went to a massive social club. So that kind of tailor made for it out of the huge halls with round tables. It's like, it's a good day, you know, the old children's social clubs and it's like they could literally put people around a round table so they weren't next to each other distance apart and of course they had a bar where they queued and they were far enough they couldn't stand up to watch us which was a shame but they were so enthusiastic they hadn't seen a gig since what march i think it was so they hadn't seen any gigs at all so when we came on it was like wow it felt like wembley because they're all shouting screaming and having a great time you know a few beers 
No, well, it, well, it was done really well as well. You have your one-way systems, your sanitizing stations. You have separate uh, places to order food and drinks. Um, and also in, well, that was one of the social clubs we played. And then in real time life, they have a spoon system that is table service and there's no contact. So people just get their drinks from the tray and that's it. So we felt We felt safe. I suppose now uh, it might be a bit more risky with the winter months, but I don't really know. I think it was, it was at the end of the day, we are, we are performers and we're here to provide entertainment for people. So it's, it's what we yeah. all do best. Exactly. The real time live was quite funny though, because when you're on stage, we quite, knew quite a few people out in the audience, because obviously that, that particular week, the standard tier system, so it got halved, the audience got halved. Some of the tickets, she had to ring them up and say, I'm really sorry, you can only have two people. So people have bought four for tables, had to now go to two. So they really did it well. Nikki was brilliant. She really organised it well. But like Julia said, they had spoons. And from an yeah. audience, from the stage, it looked like a classroom. They're all in tables and two. And it was a little weird. Yes, me, 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 me. Like, I want to go to the toilet, I want to do this. And it just looked like people ordering drinks all now. I'm going to ask now, Paul, he's going to be really drunk when he stands up. He's going to be all when he stands up. <laughs> From our point of view, it was hilarious watching them all putting spoons in the air. Uh, yeah, we did the merch orders as well. So even the merch table was... Uh, on a, on a sheet and we fulfill the orders after the gig but in a socially distanced way yeah so, well, no, so, actually, no merch done. so how do they manage the mosh pits I imagine that would have been difficult <laughs> no no mosh pits <laughs> <laughs> and if we were to meet the people um, we had to wear masks as well so you know bought those uh, you know where you see through the don't yeah. visor type things yeah oh, just yeah. so you could go out and say hello really you know so yeah, it's it different, but it works. She did it really well. So, I mean, there is a possibility that that could happen again. Um, it has to be done properly as well, so everyone is safe. Uh, we right. just had our first audience question of the night um, from our friend Shalim Hussain, who, uh, I must warn you, he, he was on absolute fire last week and threw question after question at Verity White. So, <laughs> expect something and, uh, from him. We actually on the Invisible Man show, uh, we consider um, Shalim our um, interviewer in the audience. He's, he's almost one of the crew. Uh, yeah, pretty much. We need to get him on the show one day. Um, so, first question from Shalim, because he's just put two up. Rock groups have not dominated the charts for quite a while now. Cookie Cutter Pop dominates. Why the decline of rock music, in, in you two's opinion? It's difficult, isn't it? Because, I mean... If you look at the charts, if you're it's talking about the mainstream charts, I'm guessing. Mm. If you look at that, it's usually radio airplays, isn't it? It's all about, you know, if you're on Radio 1, which record companies get behind it, they sponsor that, the pluggers get them in there, they get them played. If you've got record on Radio 1, you're going to sell a lot of records. Whereas if you've only got records on independent local stations, mm. you're only going to sell to that community who listen to that radio station. So your mainstream radio stations are pumping out this, production line basically of songs and people are just getting to hear them all day long at work or in their car or whatever they're doing and it's just almost like that's what you're going to buy you know you're not going to go onto another channel to try and find something new like what unless you really need to rock you will but it's difficult for bands like ourselves getting on those playlists because basically money talks a lot of times pluggers plug them and they get them on nice. it's because of mainstream media really that's, that's the jagged thing so it's the enemy of the people, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, another one from Shalima a moment. Uh, do you prefer playing festivals or smaller shows? Ooh, I like both. I really do like both. I like both. I like both. But I think there's some intimacy element of a, a smaller show that you can't really beat because mm. um, you can get more up and close, especially if it's a head, headline show and you have your own people there. But at the same time, festival gigs are so much fun and such a great way to mingle with other musicians and meet uh, new people. So, yeah, there are different flavors, but all in all, both uh, nice things to do. Nice. Uh, side by side. Uh, yeah. uh, Really good fun, but I mean, festival when you play to thousands and thousands of people, you can't actually see anyone. <laughs> it's usually the the uh, photography pits right there, 
so there's nobody there but lights you know what I mean you can't <laughs> see any of the audience it's kind of impersonal but when you get those little small gigs you like Julia said you can go and speak to people and get to know people yes yeah, I appreciate that yeah um yeah, I suppose in a way, if you can't see the crowd because they're far away and there's so many, it's in a way a bit easier to do because yeah. you are just there with yourself more than if you have people up close and personal and you can just get in their faces, which I love to do. Obviously. With festivals, you can just hear them, you hear the crowd, and every so often you get a glimpse. Yeah. But with like, close and personal, it's always, you know, you can see their eyes. So in a way, Julie's right, you, if you can see what they think, you can always see what they're thinking. So when you see people in the crowd and they're not smiling, you're thinking, oh, God, they hate it. <laughs> I, got, I went up to somebody once and I said, he came up to me after the gig, he'd not smile at all. His face like, looked like right spot on push, you know. I went up to him and he, he came up to me and said, wow, that's a brilliant show. I went, can you tell your face next time, please? <laughs> My man Muttley has come at us with his now weekly question. And I think I kind of know the answer, at least as far as Jackie's concerned. But sausage sarnie or bacon butty? You don't. <laughs> it's neither for you, is it? Yeah, it's vegan. <laughs> what is it about crispy you? bacon? Ah, <laughs> true, true. What about you, Julia? There's this thing called this isn't bacon that is surprisingly amazingly tasty and we always have it every time we go camping we just have a this isn't bacon butty <laughs> <laughs> it's really good and jackie makes one with um no what was it that you made with um with mozzarella cheese and smoked paprika yeah it was it was really good and also the crispy kale with with smokiness as well was really nice yeah, uh, uh, we we exchange recipes here. Ah, uh, oh, nice, nice, nice. You're like, oh, 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 God, the food questions are coming in thick and fast here. Um, hummus on toast or peanut butter on toast? Hummus, hummus all the way. It has to be peanut butter because I'm allergic to garlic. The only thing I'm allergic to is garlic. Can you believe it? So I can't have hummus unless I make it. Are you secretly a vampire? Yes, that's right. I'm a vampire. <laughs> that was official. I've been outed. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew you it. Think so, garlic of all things. I mean, I'm actually not allergic to my intolerant my throat swells and things like that, so I can't eat it. So. Um, that one comes from Raven Corvus. I haven't seen Raven on this show before, but thank you very much for your question, Raven. Hope you keep coming back. Um, I have a food question. I've got one. Um, it's a personal question, being uh, out here. I can't get find Marmite for life or money. Uh, is there a shortage over there, or is it just on this side of the world? Why would you want to? That's my question. Ooh, I, I love, love Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, love we that, have the it? two sides of Marmite here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I didn't try it until I came to the UK for the first time. And the first time I tried it, I thought it was vile. But then I had it, like, properly. In, in toast, and I actually love it. I have it every morning in my toast or bagel. Nice. Too much on. Um, <laughs> um, Julia, ju just um, for the people here who don't necessarily know you guys, where, where are you from originally? I was born in Argentina, so in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I grew up in Argentina until I was 22. But I'm also Italian on my uh, mum's side. Oh, yeah. So uh, I am a dual citizen, and uh, I lived in the UK for ten years. So now I'm pretty much a Yorkshire lass. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I was, um, right. a, uh, a a Yorkshire lass with a bit of uh, South American flair. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, pretty I, much Yorkshire. I, I got to say though, like um, there there are some singers from say your part of the world and Germany and stuff who sometimes I. I have a little trouble understanding the accent when they're singing in English and it's no detriment to them. But um, with you, just to kind of compliment you here, I've, I've got to say every song, like you, you've obviously got so good at singing in English, even though it probably wasn't your first language from birth. That, uh, <laughs> like... I'm just remember some funny anecdotes with Jackie. Rudolf! <laughs> Rudolf! <laughs> I just couldn't say... You know what's coming out in Julia? <laughs> it was so funny. 
But yeah, we, we work in the studio when we record uh, in the diction, so everything is crystal clear. Um, but yeah, when I, when I first moved to the UK, I didn't know as much English as I do now. So that helps as well. The total immersion, as I as I call it, to just be in it. So it sounds good. Santa's Harley, we did Santa's Harley, and I, I wrote a line called um, Rudolph left behind. Rudolph left Rudolph behind. Left it's hard behind. to say, but Rudolph left behind. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Anyway, she was in the studio going, and Rudolph left behind. And <laughs> we go, no, no, Rudolph. And she went, I'm Rudolph. saying Rudolph. I'm saying Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> she was so so it must have taken about 50 takes. I mean, the yeah. engineer. Absolutely, we were just in tears. <laughs> and she said, oh, I've got it now, I've got it, she said, Rudolph. And then she well, went, it's the first first oh, thing we recorded. So. <laughs> nice. Um, got another uh, audience question. Guess who? It's Shalim again. Um, Spotify has talked about the possibility of allowing a, a link to allow fans to donate to artists because they don't pay much in royalties. Is the donation possibility something that interests you? It's all right, yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't get anything to Spotify, do you? On most to be honest, I think it's a bit dodgy that Spotify... You're paying a subscription like nine ninety nine or however much it is. They should... I mean, without artists, they have no content. So they should pay the artists properly instead of 0.001 penny per, per stream, like... You have no content without the music, so I don't know. The donation feels a bit like, actually, why don't you just, why doesn't the platform pay? It is a multi-million industry, isn't it? Yeah, true. Uh, it's just a bit, like I don't know. Tip your server because the restaurant doesn't pay them enough, right? It's the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Major Matt is trying to change that. I remember Taylor Swift or a couple of other people like that, they were really trying to change all this but I don't think they've got very far yet some multi-million cooperation in it so uh yeah, yeah yeah very true very true um who produced the reflection album tim hamill. both albums tim hamill he is Amazing. magnificent we sonic, love him sonic one in wales in um, wales in wales clinically 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 and he's so <laughs> patient oh my god he's, he has the patience of a saint so uh, he's at he's, um, girls school so i obviously as soon as um it came up they were going to record i don't care how far away it is we, we just tend to we hire a house and mm -hmm. we just stay there for the week and a brilliant couple of weeks and it's mm -hmm. as well, so you can't go wrong, can you? Oh, you gotta love the old, like old style, like hire a house out records. They, yeah, they, right. I, yeah. I couldn't explain it, but like they, they just don't. They, they have some kind of vibe all of their own, if that makes sense. Rather than being in a really polished professional studio as such, because mm -hmm. you, it's just home for however long you're there. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, well, we, had, we had the studio, but we hired a house, so we didn't have to book hotels. It was like really horrible. When you book a hotel, it's not the same, ah, is it? Right. It's like a little family. So we had a, uh, we got the house, to two, two bedrooms and shared bedrooms, and then we had a nice big room and a kitchen. So then we could go home from the studio and have fun together as a band. Yeah, we watch films, we cook together. We are like a, a proper little family when we when we stay in Wales recording. And it, I think it shows through a little bit in the sound that that gelling that we do out of hours. Yeah, we tend to we tend to sing everything. So if somebody says a sentence, there might be a word in it, and we'll just burst into harmony. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really We're harmony. Harmony. we can't help it, can we? <laughs> Uh, I'll just point out to everyone in the comments they already did, did that before the show started. Um, <laughs> it, Mark, we we should do another audience question, I think. And what do you reckon? Can you see the comments right now, Mark? Uh, I can only see one uh, one of the sources at a time. But, uh, ah, right, uh, right. Follow up to that uh, producer question as if if you could work with any other producer in the world, who would it be? Um, I wouldn't want to really. I mean, I love Timbo them. all the way. Yeah, Timbo every time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I've worked with Pandorides, of course. Uh, I think. 
Um, yeah, he's great, but I, I love working with him. It's just, he's just the right kind, kind of temperament. He's just really, really cool. He's good at what he does. It's just lovely. They love him. That's amazing. Why would we want to work with anybody else? Apparently, it works for us. We get to play ourselves. He brings out the best in us as well, so it's good. That's definitely yeah. some loyalty there because I've seen some bands who it'll be a different producer for every album and you'll be able to tell as you go through Just the discography. Just name on an album. It doesn't mean anything. I've heard bands do, uh, you know, they've gone out and produced with like really famous um, producers and they've come back and they thought, well, it sounds cold. It sounds like all their other bands. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't sound like you anymore. <laughs> yeah. It sound like their other bands and it's like you've lost your, your you. <laughs> Yeah, um, oh, oh uh, and I knew this uh, audience question was going to come up. It's from Tony, Jackie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, um, greatest rock front person ever? Question mark. Ooh. For me, Freddie Mercury all the way. That's what I was going to say as well. All Freddie the way. Mercury. Always. It's just amazing. Freddie so Mercury. incredible. Such a charisma. Just got presence, hasn't he? He's just got, had the X Factor. I want to say that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you a Queen fan, Mark? Uh, from time to time. Uh, not, a, not a bit. Not a big one. Um, I've only really uh, listened to them, I guess, in the, the latter part of my life. I, I was, uh, well, as you know, Adam, I was, uh, I was involved in a completely different uh, um, area of music. I was more uh, of a pop, and uh, in the eighties, it was because Madness. Uh, Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alice, Cooper, Alice Cooper as well. I love Alice Cooper, and I love a lot of people. But when you, when you think of ultimate front person, I always think of Freddie Mercury because he had everything—the voice, charisma, everything. But um, Alice Cooper's great front man too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I have to, I have to ask, obviously, because of your stuff with girl school. Have you ever met him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did well with him. Yeah. Him. Nice, nice. Um, with Alice Cooper in uh, Spain in 2005. I remember it well. <laughs> it's like a dream come true. He's like, wow, this is it now. I think I'm happy. I've met Alice Cooper. Been on tour with him. Been to his tour bus and I thought I was taken with him and talked to him and his wife and his kid. Like, come on, this is, can't get better than this. <laughs> yeah, I can't really. It's your idol, isn't it? Yeah, because when I was 15, well, at school 15, I've loved Alice Cooper. I've got everything, been to see him play live. I was just like a little fan. <laughs> in fact, when we, when we met him, I was so drunk because I was so nervous. I fell on the way in. <laughs> I relaxed me a little bit. And Denise, Denise being drunk as well, she goes, I can't pull my fan! It's very embarrassing. Um, he was, he was uh, well, okay. Um, Raven's come back with best front woman. Uh, uh, mm. I like, I like Becky Bondage from Vice Squad. I think she's a great woman. She really has it. I've she, not heard her, honestly. Great. Really good. Yeah. She's she really good. Was. How about Debbie Harry, Diana Ross? Uh, yeah. Oh, now, uh, now you're speaking. So many. Now you're speaking my language. It's definitely. <laughs> yeah, Debbie um, Harry is definitely good. Uh, I'm just trying to <laughs> whittle down a few of these audience questions because otherwise they'll take up all the time and, I, and we don't get to ask you what we want to ask you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, Motley says, uh, and I'm guessing, that, well, this one can be for both of you because you both play guitar, but favourite guitarist ever? Ooh. Oh, Jimmy well, Hendrix. I'm from me, but I also like Billy Duffy from The Cult. And oh, Steve There's Stevens. so many, I don't know. There's so many incredible ones. Yeah, um, yeah but definitely uh, Hendrix, of course. As well. Can't argue with that. <laughs> I don't know if it's your cup of tea, Jackie. No, I. Oh, yeah, Brian I, May. I of like the oh. guitar players like Brian May and Billy Duffy. I mean, obviously they can play amazingly, but they have melody in their solos. They have melody when they play. Everything you can feel it coming from their heart. You know what I mean? Passion. You yeah. can sing a Brian May solo. You can literally sing it, can't you? Well, they're that well known these days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know what I mean? You, you can actually sing it. If you try to say, sing an Inge Malmsteen solo, <laughs> 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 that's like, you know, a crazy little thing called Love Solo. You can sing it, it's melody. Yeah, I mean, if you try to. And it adds to the song. It's not like guitar for the sake of guitar, it adds to the actual song. I like not a not Not throwing machine, but. A story. It tells yeah. a story. 
Yeah, it's yeah. good. It always sounds a cool song. I like Brian May's playing. Um, amazing, me too. Oh, oh dear. My mum is actually asking you guys a question. <laughs> oh, <she's> God. <gone. laughs> Mother, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, question. How are you coping in these COVID times and what are your future plans once we get out the other side? Ooh, I'm, I'm okay. It hasn't really affected me as much as most people. I mean, I still go out. I, I, I do a food run. Um, I see my mom. It, apart from the gigs, it hasn't really affected me at all, which I'm very fortunate. And plus, I meditate a lot. It's not affecting me mentally, which I know for a lot of people, it separates two groups, isn't it? People are going crazy and people are just thinking, let's use this time to be creative, to find a new hobby, to really get to know ourselves. And I find that meditation is the thing that's keeping me sane. Yeah, Julia, what about okay. you? For me, initially, it was like, oh, my God, this is the end of the world, because I, I love to go out and see my friends and do things and go here and there. But now it kind of became like the new normal in a way. So I'm not like massively bothered at the moment, because I, I, as Jackie said, I, I took up um, writing more music, reading more, learning new things, new skills. Um, so a uh, time for personal growth, I think, a bit. And for reflection. Reflection. <laughs> it's really funny. We had a couple of um, reviews on this album. And uh, of course, the lyrics for Make Some Noise, it said uh, the writings on the wall were heading for a fall. And um, some, uh, what was it? Some take more. Uh, uh, your covers will may lay bare. Some take more than their share. I didn't know that was going to be about toilet rolls when I wrote it, but. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I've been called a prophetess of doom. I better not write any songs about anything else in the future. <laughs> Just happy ones from now on. Uh, that be my... well, well, there you go, Mother. You finally got a question on the show. Now stop it. <laughs> Thank you, well, we're talking about reflection. It's why uh, Ashley I said he, uh, I said earlier that he just ordered a CD, uh, your CD oh, reflection. Nice one. Thank you. You'll like it. Thank you very much. Hey, um, I might have left, but might only just have one left. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, Mark, apparently uh, Shalim did an interview with Steve Stevens once. We've got to ask him about that at some point. <laughs> I, I, but, um, yeah, uh, honestly, um, like, you guys have been a bit of an inspiration, really, for me through all this, like, um, the way you've kept, just kept on keeping on, really. And I suppose with what you were saying, Julia, um, where you've not let it get to you so much, when that day comes that they go, right, in six weeks' time, unrestricted mass gatherings can happen again. Obviously, at that point, your excitement can go vertical or you know you know what i mean yeah it's a massive deal it's a massive deal not being able to be on stage it's like for me it's just it's like a part of myself was taken away but uh when that is allowed again it's going to be incredible um <laughs> my, my... as well being rehearsing and it's like most bands are kind of just stopped and it's like wow yeah. you know just keep going keep being creative we are the entertainers people need entertaining that's how i look at this um, we are the entertainers where the vera lives <laughs> of the COVID. Paul, get out there and... paul gin or gin i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing that paul says uh will you be playing in the london area at all when things get back to normal yes yeah, of course yes absolutely it's one of those things we just got to get the gigs because right now people aren't um aren't booking of course mm. But uh, even before that, it's always hard to get into London because there's such a lot of bands already playing in London. And to get a band down from Yorkshire to play London, they always want you to have um, like a local following there. And if you can't guarantee that, they won't book you. Mm. See what I mean? So it's kind of one of those catch-22 things. You've got to be, it's almost like you need to play with another band from London to get a gig in London. So it's a difficult one, but we will we will play there again. We played the lounge and uh, a couple of other places down there, so we will be back. Um, Definitely. Uh, we did Camden Rocks, didn't we? Camden Rocks, in fact. We did that while we were in the studio. That's how mad it was. Yeah, it was we, amazing, that. Nice. We, we drove down from Sheffield. I came on the train from Wales because I'd been doing the guitar. Yeah. And we met in Camden, did the gig, and then all night, Julia drove us back to Wales. <laughs> and then I went in the studio. I'd had... And I was two hours sleeping when he did some more guitar in the studio. It's crazy. 
Oh, that's mad. Um, Duncan Barnett says that his mates are currently getting driven mad by uh, him singing your song Halloween, but it's got them in. in it, it's got them into you at least. So good, good, good. Uh, um, uh, I don't. That's know, my- I don't know, Mark, if you've watched the video yet, but these did an awesome video for a tune called Halloween. Um, very B movie horror stuff. Um, of course. Uh, in involving Kim and Denise from Girl School. Shout out Kim and Denise if you happen to see this. I freaking love you guys still. Um, who the hell had the idea to do that? Because that was crazy. <laughs> well, I wanted, to, I wanted to get them involved. And um, we thought, right, well, <laughs> it's just um, we'll put them as zombies. And they had a friend down there, didn't they, Julie, who, who did makeup. Yeah. Was really lovely. yeah, yeah. She, she was like, great. College or something, but she broke her name. Can you remember her name? I can't, but uh, it, she was amazing. She threw in a lot of prosthetics and things. It was incredible. And Denise was loving it. You know, getting all this baby. Yeah, she was loving it. And I just remember it because I was like, Julie was doing all the filming and I was because I wasn't in that particular bit. I was trying to boss people. Around. I was trying to boss around zombies, drunk zombies all day long. <laughs> <laughs> there were drunk zombies loving each other. You're not supposed to be loving each other, you zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Hugging each other. You're a zombie. Look angry. Hey, zombies need love too, okay? Zombies need Aww. love too. Yeah, well, yeah, but they're supposed to be trying to kill people. Yeah, n- namely you for a lot of it. Well, nearly, well, well, nearly killed Julia, didn't you? Because tell that story when you're on the track. You turn to run to find the gun, but we all know he's coming for you next time. <laughs> and and they just the eat me. <laughs> yeah, when you were filming Denise, you had to actually stand on the tractor. Didn't yeah, you? I was standing <laughs> on the tractor filming oh. Denise with my phone because it was all made to look like a like 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 a DIY sort of thing, mm-hmm. like a sort of mm-hmm. naff comedy thing. So we used uh, our phones to do it. I I love yeah. those old kind of kind of more comedy than horror horror films. So. Yeah, definitely. Right. We're so, too. Green screens everywhere, don't we, for stuff and all sorts of things. Yeah, it's quite fun to do. A lot of work, but we, it was worth it because we had a really good time doing it. And a lot of our friends helped, obviously. You know, obviously Kim and Denise and a few of Julia's friends in Sheffield. Um, so we had Essex location, Sheffield location, a bit of Lee's location. We had a bit of everything, really, for that one. It's good fun to do. Nice, it was, nice. It was really fun. Nice. Hey, Mark, um, switch over to the Hellcats page. It seems there's more people from there commenting, man. And you'll be able to... Any more questions for us? Huh? <laughs> <The> deaf ones. <laughs> no, um... Drunk zombies. Uh, yeah. oh, Muttley thinks the drunk zombies might have been drinking Brains beer. Hmm. Oh, brains beer. that's what she was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> keep, 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 keep brain the... juice. Uh, keep, keep the brains away from them like they like them too much. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's obviously what it was. It was hard work that day, but what a lot of fun. <laughs> I've got the two Brewers boys that like, you know, two uh, Motorhead fans and, you know, tattoos and then rings and everything. Oh, I've yeah, got... The Shining. <laughs> They're turn, 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 turn. <laughs> the twins in The Shining, so that was really fun. Getting them to dress up. And they all loved it. Everybody was participating and re- doing whatever we asked them to do, weren't they, Julia? It was really yeah, good. yeah, it was so much fun. It we was so them. much fun. And my mum's in it as well. My mum came over to Leeds one day, didn't she? Actually, yeah. Really She's the devil. She was the devil at the end, my mum, because that was a Scooby Doo thing, you know, the reveal at the end. Well, we well, tried to get as many, many horror movies in as possible. And we had a competition. How many movies can you spot? Like, you know, the um, guitar coming off of the church. Yeah. That, that took me, <laughs> by the way. But that was my brother who was the priest. That's ah. my little brother. So we got him involved. And that was like, obviously, the omen. And there's like lots of that, like, the shining. And there's so many horror movies in there. So we got Scooby doing at the end to really throw people where my mum takes off the mask. Ha <laughs> ha, pesky kids. <laughs> and, I, and I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you, oh, pesky <laughs> kids. <laughs> Please, Mr. Exactly. Please, Mr. Zuckerberg, don't take me down for saying that. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, it, yeah, I mean, I, I only truly discovered Citeria at the um, start of lockdown, but obviously, uh, I, and I mean the first lockdown here. Um, but obviously, I'd followed Girl School for years and years, and um, this question was asked a little while ago in the interview, 
But, Jackie, we just got to know, is Lemmy really as much of a madman as everyone says he is? He was great. I loved Lemmy. He was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> nice man. Yeah, no. I'm not always saying mad. Yeah, it's mad in some ways. In fact, the last tour we did in 2015 when he died, in fact, we were on the tour when he did it, um, in November, and he was just as mad as ever because every time he used to see me, he used to go, hey, up, Jax. <laughs> so I'm my accent. I'm like, hang on a minute, you're checking the mickey out of my accent. You're so stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but him and, him and um, uh, Mickey D, I was at the sound check on the, I think, first or second day and talking to Lemmy, and he started doing four Yorkshireman sketch. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Guy from Sweden taking Mickey out. I mean, Lemmy from Stork taking Mickey out. My accent. Hello. <laughs> but he used to know four Yorkshireman sketch so well. He was brilliant. He had a great sense of humor. Really, really cool. Um, I also believe Shaleem might not have studied sort of who you guys are and stuff he's asking how you found your drummer obviously i know the answer to this but i think julia is probably the one best place to answer this one i met him when he came out of my mom <laughs> <laughs> my mom made me a drummer <laughs> this could go a really really wrong direction couldn't it <laughs> no let's keep it classy oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> we, we almost we almost went down this road last week with Ari e. White and it nearly all went wrong. So we'll, we'll keep it classy with you. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's um, do that. <laughs> right. Um. Oh. Oh God. Here's a clincher for you though. The, the Christmas movie question: Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's Christmas. Let me have a think, because I've seen it like ten years ago or something. It's what? based at Christmas, that's about as Christmas as it gets. He's actually going home for Christmas, isn't he? It's not exactly wonderful life, is it? Well, yeah, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no. Maybe the one on the boat. Maybe that one is kind of Christmassy. Not the one on the boat. The one on the boat. I don't think you're on that hard. <laughs> <laughs> the one on the boat? Or am I confused in the film? <laughs> no, I'm sober, I'm sober, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, is this you... a die hard movie we've not seen? Die Hard. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm just confused. That's Bruce Willis, remember? You know Bruce Willis? Yeah, yeah. I thought there was one that they were on a, on a cruise ship or something, and there's this buddy that. And there was a Steven Seagal one that came out where he was doing that, but it wasn't Die Hard. Okay. Um... I don't know. <laughs> he cares not. She cares not for Die Hard. <laughs> 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 no. Best, best Christmas quote from Die Hard is. Ho, ho, ho. Now I have a machine gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, can be, it can be Christmas. I suppose if you, if you watch it on Christmas, yeah, why not? It's just like Christmas movie. You have in mind, really, is it? Let's go see how many people we can kill. How many bad people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cr Christmas stocking full of bodies, like. Yeah. Again, exactly. please, Mr. Zuckerberg, don't take me down for saying that. But um, in answer to your question, Shalim, um, Citeria's drummer is Pablo Calvo, Julia's brother. Uh, who, mm -hmm. Who's the older out of the two of you? I'm the oldest. Ah, fair enough. So you get to boss the drummer Just... around. You get... No, no, not at all. We are, <laughs> we, we are, we, you know, boss each other around. There's always some sort of thing, sibling thing going, but it's all fun. We have a great relationship, and to be honest, it would be weird not to play with my brother. We we've played together since we are young kids, so Fair. it's great. Yeah, I mean, um, as I told you before, um, we came on stream. Uh, my dad is actually the drummer in my band, and I'd worked with a load of different drummers before, um, but now, as much as at times he annoys the hell out of me, I it, like <laughs> we once had to uh, get a deck drummer in for a show and uh, it felt weird I, it, mm. it felt so weird i'm i'm not saying this guy was not a really good drummer shout out kieran klein if you're watching um and uh but yeah it just felt so so weird honestly um but like it, you you guys have really gelled into live force to be reckoned with now to it's be just honest. Pablo's helping us rehearse while we found a drummer. Ah. Yeah. 
because he was a great drummer and when you know he sang as well which is amazing because he's a very talented talented boy and of course when we were still looking for drummers i thought there's no way we're going to be able to replace him he fits why well. we don't need to yeah we didn't need to it's like wow he sounds amazing his drumming was superb i thought there's no way and he's a fantastic singer as well and the, the amazing yeah back of vocals brilliant so we thought there's no way we're going to replace him so we asked him to join the the harmonies going on between all four of you is just amazing Hang on. I loved it. Honestly, and uh, Steph, your bass Thank player you. as well, amazing voice. She's a that. she's a lead vocalist actually. In, in her previous band, she she was uh, the lead vocalist, wasn't she, Jax? Yeah. So, so she's a very strong vocal, and I think we 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 just when we we rehearse like a choir, we 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 sing a cappella together. Uh, so we ah. so we learn to to listen to each other. Mm. So I think that's why maybe. Um, it just sounds and better we live. Driving to gigs and that, we used to just rehearse in the car, didn't we? Just like a bella. It's yeah. Just, the, the just doing that. Um, yeah. Ha- we just put harmonies in. <laughs> Another one from Shalim. Uh, how did Steph join the band? You you answer that one, Jackson. <laughs> well, when, uh, when we were in the studio, um, Kira who was obviously the first bass player. She was in so many different bands at the time. She was really busy. So we just thought we can't even do a photo shoot or anything like that. So we decided that we got to replace her, which, you know, was mutual there. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were looking for a new bass player. And Steph just happened to come along for an audition. We auditioned two or three pe- pe- people. As soon as we saw her and we heard her, we just knew, you know, when you just know. Yeah. We hadn't even heard her sing at that point, had we? We just knew. So, and she comes from Durham, so she drives down from Durham. Nice, nice. Um, she, was she was a perfect fit. Yeah. Musically, like, yeah, and as a personality. Yeah. A lead vocal, a lead vocalist, so her harmonies are really, really good. And it doesn't yeah. take much to, it didn't take much to slot her in. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. she already sings, so all it was was letting her learn her parts. You know, she just had to say, okay, that's my bit, that's what I do. So uh, it, It's always kind of like a jigsaw, really. If yeah. If you get the right pieces, it'll fit. Yeah, it wasn't hard to rehearse her in, so we did a gig fairly quickly, actually. Yeah, yeah, two. yeah. Within two months, I think, I think we were gigging again. We did, yeah. And two or we, three months. Then we supported Vice Squad, didn't we? That was our second gig. We did a gig before that, so that wouldn't be Yeah. Better. yeah. Nice. Of and she recorded all of the parts of the album as well? She re-recorded all the, the bass tracks that Kira had done, because I, I felt that was the right thing to do. For her. Yeah, definitely. There, there's nothing worse than mm. touring an album that you're not in. He's doing it wouldn't be fair. She's literally doing all the work to promote the album. So we thought if we put her bass tracks on and her vocal, then at least she's promoting something she's involved in and it makes it more worthwhile for her. So, See, Gary, and- Gary literally just asked that question and I was about to ask it, but you answered it for me. <laughs> hey. So we recorded, yeah, we recorded it with Kira back in oh, whenever. And then when Steph joined... We re-recorded the bass and her vocal. Nice. Yeah. nice. They have to postpone the release because um, Kira was busy, so we couldn't really tour the album. So that was the catalyst, I think, for starting to look uh, for a new bassist. Oh, no, totally get it, totally get it. Um, oh, an- another one from my dad, Tony. Jackie, <laughs> which, which do you have more of, shoes or guitars? Guitars. <laughs> Um, shoes. I'm not really a shoe person. <laughs> uh, but I do have a lot of guitars, but I have more shoes. Uh, to be fair, I've seen some of the boots you wear on stage, Julia, and they're, they're oh, huge, huge. <laughs> like, yeah. How you walk in that girl? She's trying to be as tall as me. She's trying to be as tall as me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very short. That's a, that's a fact. But um, to be honest, as long as I don't jump from a very high drum riser, I'm okay with the heels. Yeah, well, as a rule of thumb, now I learned that if the drum riser is about as ha- as tall as me, I probably shouldn't jump from it. Julia, Julia, <laughs> yes. I think from what Jackie was just saying that there's a story in here somewhere, yeah. <laughs> and she's just she's just kind of dropped you in it because you know I'm now going to ask what happened. Well, to yeah, it, like I just that. jumped from a really high drum racer once and I injured my foot. But at least it was the last gig of the tour. Ah, fair enough. So, <laughs> at least, uh, yeah. It was, okay. was, it was, it was a winter storm. We were on the winter storm, storm, yeah. Winter storm. Main stage. That's true. 
And um, it was brilliant because you and Kira were up on the drum lines, the lights was very high. You both jumped off. No, sorry, you jumped off. She just walked down. You jumped off, but when you landed, you didn't even know you hurt yourself, did you? And then you no forward and bust a lip on the microphone as well. Oh no, that yeah. sounds nasty. <laughs> yeah, I hit my <laughs> yeah. Hey. Um, you're not the first. I didn't realize to... because I was you no know, in the heat of the moment and all warmed up, moving around the stage. I didn't realize until I had to hold the final note of of loner. <laughs> loner. And I could feel all of my body shaking. Oh my god, this is bad. They did something wrong. <laughs> that that's when I realized there was something wrong. But until then, I didn't. Well, well, Put in the ice pack afterwards. It's quite fun. <laughs> see, um, there, there's a funny one I'll tell you here that I think you'll appreciate. Um, you know, obviously Guns and Roses have got back together with Slash and Duff now. Um, there's mm-hmm. videos out there from their first show back together, a little club called the Troubadour in LA. And um, Axel has that little dance sort of thing he does where he's stamping his foot a lot uh, uh, like oh, yeah. during songs like Welcome to the Jungle. And apparently mm-hmm. he was loving it so much that he's literally smashing his foot down and he's ended up breaking his heel. Oh. <laughs> Absolute fool. <laughs> wow. Or, um, <laughs> so, um, so Dave Grohl has had to lend him a throne to go on tour with. Oh, honestly, because <laughs> Grohl a couple a, a few months previously had broke gone flying off a stage in Gothenburg and full on broke his leg. I remember uh, that, yeah. Uh, Ouch. yeah, yeah oh, yeah, trust me. That was nasty. It, mm. the, the video it makes it look as nasty as it is. Um, well, luckily, I didn't break anything. <laughs> you need to do it next time, babe. You're too much of a lightweight. <laughs> I just kind of landed on the ball of my foot. Uh, because obviously the rest of the food was on a very high heel, ah. so all of my weight landed on on that ball of food, and then I had a bruise on top of my foot Ow. from the impact. So it was pretty bad, but uh, it, within a week or so, it was the, it didn't hurt anymore. So nice. it wasn't too serious. Nice. <laughs> still carried on like star. Yeah, just carried on. Oh, you got you only live one. Um. Shalim is... yeah, on that line, I've got a question actually. Uh, um, is uh, on that line, um, we see, obviously there are some darker sides of show business. What would you say is uh, the least glamorous thing in show business for you personally? Sometimes the dressing rooms, yeah, <laughs> it could Killing. be the toilets because <laughs> you're changing in the toilets with everybody else coming in now and you've taken up a cubicle. And <laughs> that's not very glamorous is it no it's not it's really not peeling off the leathers oh. after a, a show is, is like soup it's like oh. <laughs> it's really put in there <laughs> that's not it looks nice but actually under all of that is um uh, it's very sweaty <laughs> yeah <laughs> yummy Yummy, um, nice. <laughs> but, um, Sh- Shalim asks for what is plastic fantastic about? One of my favorite songs from the new album. That plastic surgery, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of young people are influenced by how models look and how glossy magazines make you look. And they have this image of what they should look like. And it's like, you know, for each one like me, there's another. 20 people want to, you know, look and do plastic surgery because they've heard their stars on this plastic surgery. Yeah. People look in the mirror and they're not happy with what they see because they're comparing themselves all the time, you know? Yeah. So I thought, you know, everyone, it's not everyone, but there's so many people influence the younger generation, so men and women, it's not just women. So they all want to look like this image that they see on a magazine, which is not even true. You, you meet some of these models and they've got no makeup on, they've got spots, you know, they're not perfect. But yeah, it, it makes them seem like these, you've got to look like this in order to get on in the world. You know, you've got to be this thin and this way and it's it's just not right. And I think it's a little bit pop of that. You ever saw Nip Tuck, the programme Nip Tuck? Yeah, yeah, I did. A little, a little bit on that, you know, and suck, tuck and lift. There's no end to my list. <laughs> Should check the angle in case there's something I've missed. That sort of thing, you know. It's kind of yeah, yeah. that's that really. Um, Tony is also asking about your work with the homeless. I'm not sure quite what he means, but enlighten us. 
Yeah. No, I don't. Um, I actually um, volunteer for uh, a food collection, which is like, I've been doing it for I don't know. I've been doing it for about three years now, two three years. But um, me, my mum told me about this um, project about five years ago. I started. There are only two in the world, one in Pudsey and one in Holland. And it's collecting food that was going to be thrown away by uh, stores, basically, big stores. And they're just throwing so much food away. It's like two tons a day just in this area. And that's not even a lot, all the supermarkets. And um, this, this particular project, called, they're now called Rethink Food. What they do is they send volunteers out to these, these uh, um, supermarkets. We collect anything that's out of code. It can still be used. Sometimes perfect. Even, this perfect. Sometimes it's not even. A, it's like if you got three peppers in a pack, and it's been split open accidentally. They've got to throw those three peppers away. Why not just sell them singly? You know, it's just crazy. The the waste is ridiculous. And I've been doing this now every Wednesday and Friday morning. I've done it today actually, and it's just so much food. It's criminal. Yeah. It's absolutely it's criminal. I think it's uh, it's more than criminal. It's immoral to throw food away, f food waste, perfectly good food that would end up in a landfill. It it's just immoral. Food. Having people starving it around the world It's just so. Yeah, when whenever we have time, well, Jackie volunteers on a regular va basis, and whenever I can, I also uh, drive the vans around of the junk food project. Yeah, it's crazy. You, you would not believe how much food gets wasted. It's insane, <laughs> insane. The warehouse full of food. You get it like coded for next July. You know, they're still good till next July, but they're taking up shelf space and not making enough money, so they just run out. <laughs> yeah. Bad, you know? yeah. Or sometimes it has a tiny dent, the box or whatever, and they just can't, they don't sell it anymore because it has to be perfect, you know, for the yeah. shelf. Because it's great because these stores got involved, you know, the ones I got, I got Morrison's and Max and Spencer's and Buffett's, Cobb, and they, they all got involved, so they don't want to waste it. But the government law say if it's past its, you know, used by, sell by day, you've got to throw it out if it's past sell. That doesn't mean to say it's not by use by day. You know, you can still eat. We've got eyes, we've got a nose, we've got a mouth, you know? Yeah. If you can see it wrong, don't eat it. If you can smell it, it smells wrong, don't eat it. And if you put it in your mouth and it tastes wrong, spit it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's not rocket science. Um, okay. So that's something I try to teach my kids is that the numbers don't mean anything. Uh, and eggs. you know when an egg's bad, right? You don't need a number to tell you an egg's bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, an egg stink really bad when they are bad. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. Um, can we find uh, this project anywhere online if people wanted to give them some support? Yeah, I mean, look definitely. At yeah, rethink food. It used to be called food revival, and now it's called rethink food. And it's it's a brilliant project. They get involved with so much, and they they have like a where a warehouse where they all sort it out, and anybody who wants food just comes and gets it. You know. That's cool. That's and they cool. hold more than they need. And anything that is rancid, because <laughs> some things are, sometimes my car stinks of rotten bananas, you know, <laughs> it smells horrible. Um, but what they do with all the, the things that they can't eat or should be eaten, they put in this massive bin and this van comes and takes it to a biofuel uh, factory, which is just outside of Yorkshire. Ah. So nothing Here. gets wasted. So, here in Sheffield, we take them to to the farm for the pigs. Well, when the farms so, here, that's why right, they're doing these as well. For pig food. And like yeah. massive, massive bags of carrots that, you know, the, the big um, uh, trade markets throw away because they've just few got them rancid. Then they take them to the pigs, pig farms and the, the carrots and things like that. So there's nothing goes to waste whatsoever. It's a fantastic project. Yeah, see... um. Just uh, one last kind of thing on uh, the whole gigs situation, of course. There is one gig that is announced and confirmed, which obviously you knew I was going to say something about this. Yes. It, oh, yes. um, I, I will have the honour of opening for the Citeria and then the Wild Hearts at the Tram Shed in Cardiff, 3rd of September. Just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> Really, yeah, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to playing with Wild Hearts. I'm not even, I don't even have seen it live, <laughs> ah. which is weird. Well, um, it, the album, <laughs> the album's been seen online. Yeah, um, I I'm do, really looking forward to that. It, yeah, no, um, it, they're a great live band, honestly. I've seen them so many times. Um, uh, thanks, Dad, for putting the uh date in the comments and uh, put the venue as well, man, not just the date. Come on. On. See, your dad's coming under. You can't slag him off now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll still, it'll still slag me off. <laughs> off, but um, yeah, no, I, I'm so stoked for that gig. To be perfectly honest with you, as soon as, uh, as soon as I finish.
I'm grabbing a beer. I'm going down the front, ready for you lot. Oh, to be honest. <laughs> It's, it's, but, um, we'll get you to screen Halloween then, since I know that one. You can do the screen. Oh, it, it, yep. If you're yes. down on the front, I'll, I'll let you scream into the mic. Oh no, no, no! If you if you need someone to like dress up as a zombie and like on stage, like come on, come on, got me back. <laughs> Why not? Some zombie dancer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it... I'll need to drink blood, Adam, and if you can save me some, because remember I'm a vampire. Uh, I, 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 I will I will get you a pint from the bar. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Mark, you got any more? Uh, no, I think we're good. I've got a whole lot of questions I'd like to we'd get to at some point, but maybe we'll, uh, we'll get you back on the show. Yes. Um, Brilliant. It, it, like, there's only so much one episode can even give, uh, give us, but ladies, I do want to let you know that you're actually our highest number of live views so far. No, um it's been holding consistent around the twenty or so mark. Um everyone who's been watching, thank you so much for that. Um the this show has just gone strength to strength really. I never expected anything like this. And I just quickly want to announce that tomorrow night there's a bonus episode for Christmas Eve. <laughs> What? Why didn't you tell me? I did. You were there. <laughs> uh, um, but that is interviewing Blitz about their new Christmas single, I Believe in Christmas. As Jackie, you looked like you might have heard that. Well, I've uh, obviously Blitz and I reviewed them on the radio thing I did last week with Mandy. Oh, yes, yes. And thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, 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 about... That was a bit strange, reviewing a song that I was actually on. Yeah. Um... <laughs> The, 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 the final thing, obviously, I want to talk to you about because some people in the comments may not have heard about it, obviously. Um, and I wish I'd have known more about Citeria at the time, Julia, because I would have so got you on that song as well. I'll, um, <laughs> I'll, but um, I wrote a little song called Rule Britannia at the start of the first lockdown, just trying to get people a bit more positive and helping the NHS out really. And I'll be honest, when I first reached out to you, I was like, that's Jackie Chambers of flipping girls school. She ain't going to want to do this. What, what am I doing? <laughs> but um, our mutual friend, uh, Tristan Blythe from 99 WNRR was like, go on, go on, on, reach out to her, reach out to her. And then a couple of days later, I get a message back from you like, Oh yeah, I like this. So I'm like, <laughs> I got to be honest, Jax, it took me a good 10 minutes of even reading that message to think, Oh shit! I might actually want to go and send her the song now, <laughs> uh, like, the, like the stem files, as you know. Well, that's what I was told you before it's like um, I got asked to do quite a bit during the first lockdown, but I, I said to our manager, "I'll do it if I like the song. I'm not doing anything if I don't enjoy it. There's no, there's no point. It's not heartfelt, is it?" But when I heard the song, it passed the old day whistle test. I thought, "Yeah, I keep singing this all day long." So I was like, "Yeah, I'll definitely do this." I could think of ideas straight away, so I thought, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> nice. I mean, that song swallowed about three months of my life. I don't think I've ever spent so long just doing stuff for one song, you know? <laughs> oh, it, it, it was mad. Uh, Nick Grimley says he's finally got here. Right as I'm about, uh, right as I'm about to say, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jackie and Julia from Citeria. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, you have been amazing tonight, and all of you lot in the comments are amazing as well. Mark, tell them they're amazing as well, would you? You're amazing as well, will you? Yes, <laughs> thank you so much. Have you got anybody from Camden over there? Very no. busy. I've been a little distracted trying to keep up with the uh, with the chat there. I've got to switch between multiple platforms, but yeah, it's uh, been great. You, you girls were actually wonderful. Um, really would love to continue this conversation a little bit, maybe next year. So, Mark. Mark, do you go out in Canada? Do I go out? <laughs> Does this go out in Canada, should I say? Yes. Oh, yeah. This is uh, well, it's, uh, worldwide, right? It's on the internet. Okay, we've, got, um, we've just signed a deal with Renaissance. Okay. To have Reflection released as a vinyl only out there. Nice. So that well, I also do another show uh, called the uh, was it was the original show that I was doing was the Invisible Man show. Uh, would love to have you on there as once once you've uh, helped you promote. Yeah, yeah. You know, we tend to reach a lot of the same people, but um, you know. That's all right. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I love it. Love it. Well, look, 
Um, oh, oh, my grandma's even watching now. Hi, grandma. <laughs> Adam, she's telling you it's past your bedtime. Oh, what's going on, man? <laughs> like, <What>? I, <laughs> well. I, Does anybody watch on YouTube? Can you see? Uh, if there, if there is on YouTube, uh, one. Is there, if there is a, <laughs> one on YouTube. That's, that's my mum. Hi, mum. Uh, um, <laughs> be watching too. I can't, my network's down at the moment, so she can't. <laughs> oh dear. Well, uh, it's all available <laughs> after the fact. It, it's all available after the fact. There's a playlist on the yep. Hellcats page for all episodes of Welcome to the Madhouse. Uh, Mark, you should probably also do a playlist on Invisible Man for these. Well, actually, we've got, if you go down to, like, right there, the invisibleman.ca slash madhouse, uh, we put all the links to the shows uh, on that location. You can also see them uh, on the, uh, I think you posted up to the Adam and Hellcats YouTube channel as well. Yes. They're automatically going to the Invisible Man show page. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Man, well, the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. So it's, we're, we're spreading out as wide as we can. We're spreading our wings and flying. This is the new thing that's going, isn't it? Let's face it. Like something. Yeah. (laughs) All right, everybody. Again, thank you very much, obviously, to Jew here and Jax. It's an honor to have you on the show. Um, And from me and Mark Davis Stallard. well, Merry Christmas! Yeah. Happy holidays! Merry Christmas! We will see you in. The, uh, yeah. We, we will see you in the new year, but you'll see a pre-recorded version of us tomorrow night on the bonus episode with Blitz. But until then, I release you. <laughs>